Okay, folks, we're back working on this uh, four-wheel drive. Got uh, both rotors on and uh, lock and lockouts are all on and done. It's working good, locking in, locking out. And uh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Come see me. But uh, anyway, got a little issue on the uh, caliper I want to show you. And, you know, I was, I'm wanting to use these... Uh, to me better uh, backing plates because like I said this one's got sheet metal and then partial steel and them ones are full steel and I just I just like them better so uh, what the issue is is this piece right here on these calipers comes down and hits and you can see where I tried to do it get it on there last night where it's shiny at right there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the plasma, I'm just going to cut me a little loop out there. I could grind it off here, but what the problem is is when somebody goes to buy 19, you know, 85 or 86, I can't remember what the year this thing going thing is now. Anyway, 85 I think, but if they go to buy 85 model calipers, they're not going to fit if I grind this off. So we're going to make it where, you know, it'll fit on there that way when they, you know, if anybody ever buys any, they'll, they'll go right on, but let's, uh, Go ahead and get that done. We're gonna get the wheels on. I've still got to put the find the other strap for the U-joint. And then we're gonna actually fire this thing up. I don't know, like I said, if it'll go in gear or not. I hope it'll go in gear. Uh we'll see about that mess with the uh with the hydraulic clutch. And uh if you hadn't seen it. There, there it is. It's coming up. I hit the exhaust on this end. It's loose. It's crooked, bolts ain't in it. We got a stack of washers here. This bracket that comes out it's against the frame. I might at least try to tighten it down a little bit or something before I go to move it. I didn't even notice that. It looks like they. I gotta see how they've done that. Yeah, they just. They've got it partially bolted through the bell housing. And there's not even a bell housing bolt. In for the long one. That would be the bottom one because it's below the pin. So there's no bottom bolt in the bell housing, and then we've got all this rigmarole. Lord have mercy. I mean, I, I like a hydraulic clutch. Don't get me wrong. I just, uh, I mean, and this fork. You know, I'm sure this is the original fork for this cast iron bell housing. You know, I have no clue if the, you know, the ratio is right on it. Does this push far enough to release the clutch? Then when it comes back, does it release the bearing off from the forks of the pressure plate? So, you know, that's just a guess. I mean, that's, I mean, it's long, but, you know, that's, it's not made for it. It's kind of crazy. There's our plug for a 700R4. I guess this truck must have originally had. So, uh, anyway, what a mess. I mean, I can build a bracket, I can do whatever, I can get it lined up, but I mean, it, I gotta make sure it's got enough travel, enough throw. And uh, the ball's still on the engine, I've seen it. We could get a Z-bar and put the old style clutch pedals in this, I've got them. Uh, but, you know, that's gonna retire, require taking the whole brake assembly out and stuff, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea anyway. So I may go with the old style mechanical, you know, which ran a Z-bar across with the, with just the rod that come from the Z-bar up to the, the clutch fork. Uh, that's probably the better, probably the better solution for this, as long as, you know, all the motor mounts and stuff are good. Well, motor mounts are bolted in anyway, that's, that's one good thing. I'm surprised, but uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll keep knocking all these little problems out until we get it. But this exhaust, it's just slid over here, slid into here, and slid into there. Now, believe it or not, I used to help avoid a muffler shop down in Cameron, and I actually done that pipe back here years ago. And, uh, and I do want to say, too, the guy I got this truck from is a buddy of mine down the road. He didn't have anything to do with none of this. So the last owner wasn't the problem. 
definitely wasn't the problem. It was uh, before him. You know, he sort of got stuck with it. You know, wasn't. You know, I'm sure he didn't know what he was getting himself into when he bought it. And uh, and I kind of, I'm pretty lucky at usually figuring the worst and you know hope for the best. And uh, sort of like the crankshaft on the Duramax, it's definitely a crankshaft broke, but. You know, I kind of figured out when the boy told me that the harmonic balancer was bad, that was the, I kind of assumed that was the problem with it. So uh, I'm usually not too surprised on anything. And uh, and I'm not surprised with this thing except for the amount of stuff that's actually an issue on it. And, uh, but we will, we'll get it all straightened out. That's the, that's the main thing. And uh, yeah, I'm not seeing too much more. I mean, I really just, you could about do a, a DNA test wherever you find that guy's DNA at, you probably got a problem. So, I don't know who done it. Don't really care, I don't reckon. All right, show you more. Okay, show you what I've done there. I just cut out a little circle. I think that'll work. Okay, we got this side on. Uh, I didn't buy new brake pads. These was good and thick. We're going to run them a while anyway. And, uh... I'm not into spending money on something if you know I'm not sure what what's going to happen you know with this thing yet so uh, everybody knows the situation anyway calipers on I cleaned these pins up good greased them cleaned it up good in here and greased it both sides uh, you want your caliper to be able to slide if you don't if you ever pull your caliper off and you notice that you got a brake pad that's wore a lot more than another one uh, the reason is is your your uh, caliper is not returning it's not moving you know it only pushes on this side and it pulls on this side well, it's got to be able to move itself back over, you know, when you release the brake. So, you know, you need to make sure that this is good and free left and right. And anyway, that's one of the deals. Uh, the other thing, I had a uh, comment. My brake line was too short, you know, because it was nice and straight and hanging. And uh, now this thing is on jack stands. There's no weight on the tire, so it's going to actually push up farther. But also, hopefully you can see that loop there. This is just a, a, a stainless, I think it's stainless maybe, with uh, rubber coating over it, so it's a really good stiff line. And uh, I mean, it moves and everything, but that's why you're seeing, you know, it looks like it's pulled straight or pulled tight, but it's not pulled tight. It's actually got a loop up here, so we've got plenty of extra. And uh, you know, it won't be that stretched that far once we put the wheels on and get the weight on the axle, but uh, let me get to the other side and go ahead and get it knocked out and done, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, folks, wheels are back on, uh, drive shafts in, we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready to start it up and see if it'll move. Uh, I may have to start it in gear and then just shut it off. Hopefully I can get that battery to charge up good. I might have to go grab and snatch a battery. Uh, I've, I don't think I've ever bought anything with a real good battery in it, so, uh, you know, I'm not expecting it to be a good one in this one, you know. Things usually don't change too much. Uh, one thing I did want to address, a couple comments, or at least a comment on the, uh, I'll let this siren go by here real quick. As long as they're not coming to get me, I'll be back. Okay. Well, uh, anyway, frame issues. Uh, these things have been known to crack the frames around the steering boxes. But I'm going to tell you my opinion on this, and... This is from years of messing with square bodies, and, and trust me, I, over the years I've had a, a bunch of these trucks. The main reason that people have problems with frames on these trucks, and steering problems also it'll cause, uh, of course, going off-road, but bumper. Uh, the bumper is a very, very important part of this whole frame structure to keep the frame from twisting. And this is what you find no bolt only one bolt where well, there should be two down there none here one bolt there this is loose now the bolts go through and this is what holds the bumper to the bracket on the inside so uh, the bumper as you can see is not tight on the bracket uh, what happens is is when you go to steer you start getting your frame twisting and it's only going to twist so many times before you start getting brakes in it. Uh, luckily this one, you know, I looked it over good. There's no cracks or brakes or anything around the steering gear box. So what we'll do is get a, uh, I'm trying to see if they had this. 
that's tight there but there's only one bolt in it there should be two uh, that's real important stuff on these trucks and uh, we will uh, get a bumper on it that's stronger and you know a little better and you can see this see a beautiful lift kit so uh, they've used the, the aftermarket hard piece and then the original rubber so we'll probably go through and try to straighten all that out too so I mean, I don't think there's much of anything on this truck. It's not going to have to be straightened out, but, you know, you can expect that. You know, you, you got to be forgiven on some of this stuff, uh, you know, when it comes to the pins in the front end and, you know, maybe the uh, the caster on the front end. And, you know, you got to realize that sometimes people just, you know, make mistakes or, or don't quite know enough about what they're doing to get stuff exactly right. And they did buy a lot of, you know, expensive parts for this thing at one time. The, the springs and all the you know the the steering components and uh, brake lines stuff like that shocks and uh, steering dampener so and this is an aftermarket drag link and stuff so I mean they've spent some money on it but uh, so you know you gotta give people a little leadway on some stuff but when it comes time for that uh, where that slave cylinder is mounted on the side of that bell housing I, I I wouldn't give anybody any slack on that. that All right, while that's charging, I'll show you my my wood heater that I got to get into my shop. It's no fisher, but save me from having to build one. Got to straighten the leg out on there. It's not broke. They bolt on. See the little line around it. It's just bent, but uh, should be good for what I need. All right, let's get this thing charged up. about something I need to do before I jump in and do this. Take this dust off. Get it off this way. Here's some more pretty work to look at. Let's see if come out. Oh well. <laughs> Watch the uh, mountain break. Yeah, it says 88 Chevrolet truck on top, which is a new body style. This is terrible. All right. I'm going to call the morgue and we get a damn appointment started. Let's see if we can get her in gear. Ah! Got her in gear. Well, we had it in gear. Oh, it's jumping out of the granite here. I think I can get it in. You can uh, put the clutch pedal under the brake pedal and operate them both at the same time. 
you go, that's for them sticky hill situations. <laughs> Okay, first off, I know I knew this radiator was bad. I've got another really good one to put in it, so that's not an issue. The oil issue that I see. I didn't think much about it when I when I got this truck, but he handed me a brand new valve cover gasket and told me it was a valve cover gasket for this side. So I don't think there's one on it. I don't think there's a valve cover gasket at all on that side, so we'll have to take care of that too. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get started on the wiring issue for too long. You know, like it, these wiring on these trucks are not complicated. Uh, we can take care of that, no problem. Okay, back at what we're working on here. Okay, I showed you the yoke that I pulled for the rear. It's in terrible shape. So, here's our beautiful dry shaft. Okay. One issue is here. I think someone has done that, so I want to recheck it, make sure that it's right, and then uh, before we go too far with this thing, and and we may cut it here anyway because this yoke is bad, and this has definitely been welded. So what we may do is find another drive shaft that's longer, and just keep this part. Now the reason we have to change this, this is what happened to this truck. I guess. They were driving it, and of course the front end was bad, so you know they wasn't pulling with the front end. The rear end, something happened. Yoke, through the dry shaft, yoke broke. When my buddy bought it, it had a bad yoke, and he bought this yoke and stuck on there. Now I don't know. I think it's just the wrong U joint, right yoke. But you know, like I said, there's an issue. It don't feel right. There's not a lot of backlash in it, but it may have been over tightened too, I don't know. You know, there's a crush sleeve in here, and depending on how far you crush it is how you set your backlash on your rear end, and as you can see, it's leaking gear oil, and uh, you know, it hadn't even been under power, it's just been rolling, but it was sitting leaking anyway. So uh, that's the reason I just wanted to go ahead and change the rear end, that way we match it to the front. I know they're, like I said, low miles, so in good shape. So that's what we're going to do next, I guess, is swap the rear, and we'll just keep working this way. Transfer case. Transmission seems to be okay. It's just hard to get it in gear, of course, because of that fine work they've done. And here's the here's the speedometer cable, and uh, I think we can, yeah, we can just tuck it back up inside that cable. What do you think? <laughs> so anyway. I don't think speedometer's gonna be too correct anyway with the tire, so we're not gonna worry too much about that. And uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, hopefully, I think transfer case transmission's gonna be fine. The engine's gonna be fine. Uh, it's got a little cam in it, but uh, you know, we know we're pulling with the front end now. We've got that part taken care of, and uh, you know, the lock-in lock-out hubs are working really good. It does seem to have pretty good brakes on it. Uh, you can act like I said, you can actually push the clutch in and push the brake about the same time. And 
get yourself stuck in a bad situation so anyway we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the rear and uh, like I said I'm not I'm not happy with blocks if you're gonna run blocks in my opinion and you know like I said it's always just my opinion if you're gonna run blocks you need to have some kind of a ladder bar coming and that helps support the rear to keep it from you know moving back and forth and twisting on this spring because you know this is nothing but a lever you know if you try to twist this spring from here you know, it's hard to do if you start adding leverage to it it gets easier if you come down here six foot and you try to do it with a bar you know you could do it by hand so it works the same principle you know you gotta you gotta watch for things like that and I guess that's I don't think that might be it looks more like a five inch but like I said I don't know if these are original springs I don't know what you know what all's been done so alright well we're moving along okay folks I think we're gonna call it a, a day on this one uh, it's getting late all right, well, I appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.